Are, are you fake crying? Stop fake crying. When you fake cry, you are so not hot. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Scream Queens characters. Hi, I'm Zayde. I'm your roommate. By now, you're probably asking yourself, wait a second, isn't this the Kathy Munch, the iconoclastic best-selling author? I'm the recipient of the world's first complete hand transplant. For this list, we're looking at the meanest, queenest, and most fiendish characters from the fun and underrated dark comedy Scream Queens, crowning our favorite with the number one spot. The Red Devil is in the details, so some minor spoilers are ahead. Who's your favorite character? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Boone Clemens. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because I'm getting really pissed off. Chad is an amazing person. Chad Radwell is the president of the Dicky Dollar Scholars and he's super hot and he doesn't have time for this. A member of the elite Dicky Dollar Scholars frat club and roommate to Chad Radwell, Boone is the sort of dude you think you have figured out on first glance. What am I supposed to be scared? A popular tag-along who will casually coast his way to the top based on connections and looks, but to be fair, that's like half the campus of Wallace University. With a supportive bro bestie and a meal ticket, life is pretty perfect for Boone, until it comes to an abrupt end at the hands of the Red Devil. Or does it? What took you so long? Smirked to perfection by Nick Jonas, Boone's connection to the killer on campus becomes one of the biggest mysteries of the first season. Nice shirt. Thank you. You know what it's made out of? What? Boyfriend material. Number nine, Grace Gardner. Girl, I was terrified I was gonna get some religious freak or a cutter for a roommate, but you're dope. Well, I don't think I'm gonna be in the room for very long. I'm rushing Kappa Kappa Tau. Hey, why don't you join with me? Oh, sweet, naive Grace. The season's main protagonist, all she ever wanted was to get a place at the sorority where her mother once made so many friends and memories, and perhaps helped to cover up a grisly death back in the 90s. Wait, what? I just feel like if I join Kappa, it'll be like I'm following in her footsteps. And how many other chances am I gonna have to feel close to her like that? Grace sees Kappa Kappa Tau as a once great sisterhood corrupted by the influence of the Chanel's and their ilk. However, the fact that the Red Devil appeared on campus just as she arrived with her sanctimonious mission to clean up the sorority and bring it back to what she imagines was a golden age of inclusiveness makes her suspicious. Very suspicious. How do you know that this isn't somehow related to what's happening now? Number eight, Dr. Brock Holt. Dr. Brock, this is my team of med students. First appearing in season two, Dr. Brock Holt, portrayed by none other than 90s heartthrob John Stamos, is head surgeon at the hospital with a dark past, which serves as the newest location for the series. I'm a surgeon, a brilliant one. You check off two boxes on the dateable guy checklist, handsome and rich, and guess what? I check those two. As a surgeon, he relies on his steady hands, after losing his right hand in a freak garbage disposal accident, he's the world's first successful hand transplant recipient. Too bad the donor hand once belonged to a murderous squash player. And when he's stressed out, it's like the hand has a mind of its own. I'm the recipient of the world's first complete hand transplant. Are you serious? That's not your real hand? Of course it's my real hand. If you buy a used car, is it yours or the guy who used to own it? Number seven, Earl Grey. Is that a real dead body? Yeah, that's a real dead body. Who is it? A member of the Dickey Dollar Scholars, he along with his bros were unfortunate enough to find the body of their buddy Boone. <laughs> Traumatized by the experience, he and his brothers decide to seek out the Red Devil and avenge his death, a calling out stunt that begins and ends in amazing fashion. And like Zayde and Grace, is ambitious enough to try and save it. Sweet and sexy, he's also the most intelligent of the DDS crew, and is total boyfriend material, if he can outlive the Red Devil, that is. I want this to be perfect. I need my lotions, my silk robe, my essential massage oils, a bottle of champagne, and chocolate covered strawberries. Do you have all that in your room? Number six, Kathy Munch. By now, you're probably asking yourself, wait a second, isn't this the Kathy Munch, the iconoclastic best-selling author whose very name has become synonymous with new new feminism? You can't have a show called Scream Queens without the original sovereign of shrieks, Jamie Lee Curtis. I saw that movie. 50 times. As Dean Kathy Munch, she is an ambitious, ruthless, confident, and sexually voracious woman who is dedicated to the removal of what she feels is the antiquated and toxic Greek system on her campus. You're awful in bed. Are you aware? I mean, just 
the worst. When she wants something, be it the presidency of Wallace University or Grace's hunky dad, Wes, she will stop at nothing to get it, perhaps even stooping to murder. And I want you what? to understand that I'm here for both your daughter and you. And I'd be happy to help you with anything you might need. By season two, she's the owner of Our Lady of Perpetual Suffering Hospital, redubbed Cure, where she is just as dominant as ever. Okay, you can fight over Chanel's breasts later, though it would be sort of like going to war over the Falklands. A lot of work for a relatively small and insignificant amount of land. Number five, the Chanel's. Good morning, slits. Good morning, Chanel. The clickest click to ever click, the Chanel's, while each with their own quirky, arrogant, and or airheaded personalities, are a package deal. The minions of Chanel Oberlin, also known as Chanel No. 1, they are so named Chanel No. 2 through No. 5, minus No. 4, and with a later edition of No. 6, because she can't be bothered to learn their real names. These beautiful and spoiled princesses are as thick as thieves. Be it fluffing their leader's already inflated ego or covering up for murder, they know one thing. On campus, popularity is power. Hail Odin, wise warrior, one-eyed wanderer. Tell the scenes your missing eyes see. Wait, Odin who? Where did you find that? I don't know, the internet? I just googled Blood Oath and this is what came up. At times, you can't help but feel a little sorry for them, and even root for them, despite their twisted brand of friendship. Why am I Mary Todd Link? God, do I have to spell it out for you? You're out of your friggin' gourd, number five. You're a weird, psycho lunatic who's gonna end up in an asylum somewhere, staring at a wall, trying to nurse a watering can. Number four, Zayday Williams. Hi, I'm Zayday. I'm your roommate. At first, no fan of sorority houses, she's convinced to join Kappa Kappa Tau by her dorm mate, Grace. When she sees the state of the elitist sisterhood, she decides to pledge, step up, and change things from the inside, running for house president against the tyrannical Chanel No. 1. Today is the day that I declare my intention to run for president of Cap House. Headstrong and intelligent, she has maybe the most realistic attitude to the crazy murderous nonsense happening in the house, which is to be on guard in order to survive. But then, why the chainsaw under the bed, Zayday? That's better. Number three, Denise Hemphill. What good are you? We can call the police ourselves. Well, with Denise Hemphill on the scene, you're not gonna have to. Killer on campus? No problem. Follow her three easy steps for staying alive, and eventually, Denise Hemphill will come a run in. Step one, if you are in danger, scream Denise Hemphill's name real loud. I will be on the premises at all times, and I will come a run in or run in the other direction, whichever is the most pragmatic. Then what you're gonna wanna do is proceed to step three. Get the hell out of there. Run away, real fast. Are you serious? Yeah, run away, get out of there, scram! The private security guard might not be the most effective guard when it comes to protecting the girls of Kappa Kappa Tau from the masked killer known as the Red Devil. Things didn't work out too well for Shondell of Best Buy after all, but she's certainly the most hilarious. She also has some of the best advice when it comes to confronting chainsaw-wielding masked killers. Don't. Hell no! You just said that you think the killer is up there and that's where you want to go? That's insane! Number two, Chad Radwell. Are you fake crying? Stop fake crying. When you fake cry, you are so not hot. Played to perfection by Glenn Powell, the narcissistic, cheating, on-again, off-again boyfriend of Chanel No. 1 could have been so easy to hate, but is in fact impossible not to love. I'm sorry everybody wants to have sex with me. Okay, I can't help that. Defender of his buddy Boone, and later Chief Avenger, he has some of the best lines of the show and steals every scene he struts into. Oh, hey, Red Devil. You like me now, bro? You like me now when I got a baseball bat, bro? President of the Dickie Dollar Scholars, he's the smug, golf-playing, pastel polo shirt-wearing embodiment of everything that's wrong with the Greek system. Despite constantly reminding every girl he meets that he's handsome, and the fact that death turns him on, he's incredibly funny and his totally screwed up, waspy family actually makes us feel a little sorry for him. She's not a farm animal. Her name is Rami, and she is a non-human helper companion. What? Before we unmask our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Gigi Caldwell. Sisters, potential pledges, I have an important announcement to make. Oh, I am bursting like a piece of freshen up. <laughs> anyway, Dean Munch and I were talking about how to bring Kappa Kappa Tau into the 21st century. Wes Gardner. Let's launch our exploration into the magic of cinematic storytelling with what I consider to be one of the 
scratch that, with what I consider to be the greatest film of all time. Pete Martinez. I mean, there's no way there isn't some real life story behind it, right? And if something did happen there, there'd be records in the dean's office, right? Old files. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have, have to, to break, break in. in. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chanel Oberlin My name is Chanel Oberlin, and I am the queen of Kappa Kappa Tau. Chanel Oberlin, that Chanel number one to you pledges, is a force to be reckoned with. For years I've seen the damage these so-called sisterhoods have had on young girls. Do you think you like to munch box because your last name is Munch, or is that just a coincidence? The meanest, most ruthless, and maybe richest president Kappa Kappa Tau has ever had the privilege of adoring and obeying, she isn't giving up her little kingdom for anything. Not jumped up pledges, not a merciless dean, not a homicidal maniac. That is, if she isn't the one behind the mask. I have killed for love, Chad. I've killed for our love. What? She's got goals, ambition, and a legion of followers, be it her Chanel minions or her social media followers, whom she deigns to adore her every chanel -oween. With a closet bigger than your apartment and an ego to match, she's the queen supreme. They put down their hot pockets and bask in the warm glow of what it feels like to love me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.